stage. Woo! Okay, we've got a really exciting session now. We're about to, I'm not sure whether it's a world first, but it's a first for me. I've never used Oculus Rift before. So we've got the, the guys from, <coughs> we've got Flavio and Matteo. Go on, please come into the stage. We're about to see Loading Human. Please, guys, welcome. Hi. So, this is your game. Can you just tell everybody that here that may, might not know about it what to expect? All right, so uh, it's a virtual reality adventure um, that uses motion controllers to simulate your hands. So basically, you are in an environment. And in this environment, you can interact with uh, almost all the objects you have around. And it follows the rules of the, um, the classical adventure games of the 90s, such as Monkey Island, let's say. So basically, you're living a story. And uh, you're uh, acting within a story by solving puzzles and going uh, forward in the, um, in the main plot. Um, that's basically the, uh, how the game works. Uh, but I mean, I'm, we could show so how should, you play. So I just and jump in and we'll. Yes, and we'll I think go that, with this. that works better. Okay. Okay. If I vomit, so, I apologize. Uh, what you see now, you see two screens because. Um, um, within virtual reality, you see in a stereoscopic way. So this is the left eye and the right eye, and he's gonna he's seeing something that has death. So he he actually has a special uh, spa spatial uh, feeling. He knows how far are, are things around him. So we're calibrating the hands so that we know how far are the hands. Everything is very experimental still. Uh, I, n none of the things are uh, actually in the market. Uh, this is a developer kit where um, it's used for developers to develop games for the Oculus Rift. Uh, the Oculus Rift should be ready, we hope, within uh, next year. Um, and so, yeah, as you can see, he's moving exactly like you would move in a video game. And uh, he's taking things with his hands. And uh, yeah, that's you. Can you see yourself? Yeah, it, that, that was a mirror. Yeah, you put the, the cube into the pedestal. Yeah, and drop it. OK, so it's going to load the, the scene. Um, this is a sandbox demo. So basically, he'll be able to go around and interact with objects. And uh, there are many type of interactions. Some of them are very simple. Some of them are uh, moving mouse, um, more complicated. How do you feel? You, you, feel, it's, you feel dizzy? Because this is the first uh, dev kit, and uh, it has a, a problem, uh, motion sickness. <laughs> After a while you play, you really feel, um, I mean, we really feel uh, some motion sickness, just like nausea, like, like if you were in a boat. Um, so try to take the books. You see there's a bookshelf to your egg, exactly. Just go there, exactly. And so as soon, exactly. As soon as you, uh, an object, uh, <laughs> oh, <it's> a, <laughs> yeah, you press the thumbsticks and you go up. Uh, you can, as you see, yes. This is something quite interesting in virtual reality. Um, you, can, <laughs> you can destroy everything. Uh, <laughs> the, um, the books you can see in the, in the final game, some of them you'll be able to open them. And you will actually read from the book. You just take the book and bring it to your face, and you'll be able to read what's in the pages. So there, is a, um, there are many layers of, uh, of, uh, of narration. You can, um, everything becomes very important, even small objects. Uh, because you can actually relate to them and understand something about the world by watching the objects and uh, interact with them. I don't know if you recall a game called L.A. Noir. It's um, an amazing game where you could actually take all the objects and see the objects, and each object had uh, its own um, story. Basically, that's, where, that's what happened here. Uh, each object... Oh, see, this is a Unity demo. Um, we developed it on, uh, on the Unity engine, but now we... <laughs> We, we changed engine and we are on Unreal 4, but uh, still the, the demo we have here is, um, is on Unity. So there are some uh, glitches. You can see some glitches sometimes when it takes the objects. This is going to disappear in the final version. Uh, so yeah, you know, there's a door. If you want, you can open it uh, by taking a key card. You'll find the key card somewhere in the room. Um, you should turn on the light, maybe. So everything is, exactly, you press the button and you, 
Turn on the light. The, the other button, this one just turn on the light of the... No, to your right. Go to your right. No, this one turns off again. Uh, the, uh, sorry, yeah, to the left, left of the door, there's uh, this button. Yeah, this thing one. Uh, see, those, those um, uh, glitches you can see are uh, because um, in virtual reality, when you develop a game, you need to, to develop it in a very different way from normal games. Uh, the dimension between the gamer and the world are uh, one to one. In a, in a normal video game, the dimensions are uh, one to three. So the game is three times the size of uh, the world, and the objects are three times the size of a normal uh, world. Uh, so basically, the engines are not used to have such a precise uh, relation between uh, the gamer and, uh, and the world. That's why you see some glitches like this one. You have to crouch. Press the thumbsticks, you can crouch. How, how are you feeling? Are you feeling OK? Yeah? OK, good. Lucky you. <laughs> yeah, we had a designer for that house. So exactly. Go up and put, put it on, the, on there. Exactly. Oh, you can leave it. It's going to work. Drop it. Drop it. It's going to go inside out automatically. Yeah. And then you opened the door. So I'm, I'm going to talk to you about the story, because there's a huge storyline. Uh, it's, it's an adventure game, so story is, um, is, 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 is really important. What you see now, this is a lab. Um, um, and the whole setup is going to be inside a scientific uh, uh, lab in the, in the North Pole, where you will have to train for a mission that will bring you uh, to the other side of the universe to retrieve a, um, the quintessence, which is a energy source that you have to bring back to save your father. Uh, this is the lab of your father where you can see he's actually doing, yeah, you can break it if you want. You know, you just throw it and it's going to break. Exactly. Um, so as you can see, the interactions are, it's uh, <laughs> walking crouch. Um, that's that's uh, part of your father, <laughs> just to let you know that things are not that normal in the world. Um, so you want to go, yeah, there's a cube somewhere. Do you want to the cube? Yes. So. Yeah, there, from the other side. You have to go and uh, so, yeah. Of course, this is a sandbox demo. So it's not the story. That, it, it's pretty much something that we uh, built to let people uh, understand how the, the, the game mechanics work. Uh, then we'll, we will fill it up with the story. Uh, but as you can see, you can pick up an object. You can uh, use an object. Uh, you can push an object. You can pull an object, which were the, the verbs you had in the interfaces of the adventure games of the 90s, such as uh, uh, Beneath a Steel Sky. Or, um, so it's exactly the same mechanics, but everything happens without a, uh, an interface and using your own movements. So yeah, you have to, you have to go up the, the elevator. Uh, you just press the button, and you go, you're going to go up. Go for it. Yeah, those are other parts of your father. Uh, <laughs> are you feeling good? You're OK? Yeah? OK, good. Yeah, yeah you're a superhero. I mean, we are, uh, okay, we are developing this game, but um, both Matteo and I, we really suffer from motion sickness. So every time we try the game, we feel sick for like uh, two or three hours. It's, uh, it's pretty hard to develop like that. Um, yeah, you have to press your hand, keep it there, and uh, it's a motion sensor, and should, yes, it open. So when you play this game, you're not having any audio feedback. But while you play the game, you're hearing what the character you're in it uh, is thinking. You are this guy called Prometheus. And every time you take an object or you watch something, you're hearing his thoughts, uh, saying something about that object or about that reality. Uh, this is another layer of narration uh, in, the, in the game. So basically, you are inside his mind. You're hearing his thoughts. It's, um, it's, it's very intimate. I mean, you, you know, so watching it like that, you don't have this sense of immersion. But he's completely inside the game. He is cut from, uh, from this reality, and he's inside this one. So hearing the thoughts of someone else uh, after a while just begins to be, I mean, you're kind of going together with the thoughts of the character. It's very, it's very interesting. Uh, this is a hint. It shows you that you have to put something there. Uh, yeah. 
put the, put the cube on the. You see that in this case there is some, some ice on the cube, so it's a, a typical adventure game puzzle. You have to melt the ice by putting it over a cooker. So you should uh, put the cube on the on a pan. There's a pan right in front of you, the other side. No, you go. You should go front. No, uh, to your left. Turn left. Turn left. Turn left, 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 left. Yeah, left, 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 left. Again, yeah. Put it inside there, inside the cook. Yeah, put it inside. There you go. You, uh, take it. Yeah, and you can put it over the disco. And then pr press the button. Uh, no, you put it again. <laughs> okay, and press the button. No. <laughs> As you see, these these small uh, glitches are because the. Um, the, the engines uh, are not ready, uh, completely ready yet for virtual reality. So the precise, the, the, we, you, we, you need like almost a, centi a centimeter, be precise at uh, one centimeter. And uh, I mean, those are things that are gonna um, be resolved in the in the develop during the development. So now this is a Simon game, kind of a Simon game. You just you have to solve this puzzle. It's uh, try to look at the cube, look at the cube, and uh, Look at this. And press, press, press it. OK, so now it's going to do a sequence. So white, yellow, and uh, the one, no, <laughs> you missed it, I think. The, OK, you have to redo the same sequence. It's a white, okay. yellow, blue. White, yellow, and blue. So as you see, it's, it's pretty amazing. I mean, you have, you have the possibility of, um, of interacting with uh, in, in a way, in ways that were completely un unbelievable uh, in, a, in a st with the standard monitor. It's so it's white, yellow, blue, white, orange. <laughs> I'm helping you. you know? white, white, yellow, blue, blue yellow, yellow, orange. Okay, and then there's uh, the f one more, and now you will see something that is um, that has a lot of potential right after the, f the end of the puzzles. Because, uh, uh, okay, this is a normal puzzle that you have in a game, but what if in virtual reality uh, someone kisses you? What if you, have, uh, you actually start to feel things that are more on the emotional side than the puzzle side? And this is what really interests uh, interest us. It's uh, telling stories and making you uh, the hero of a story that is happening right in front of you, right around you. And uh, so the emotional side of the game is, for us, is the most important. Um, are you following it? You're okay? You're good? There you go. Uh, go press the cube. He went to a, to a go to the cube. Yeah, he's engaged. <laughs> The um, the character named is uh, is Prometheus. Uh, his father name is uh, Dorian, and uh, basically this guy Dorian. Okay. So in 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 the game you will have these virtual reality moments. So you're actually not in a real reality maybe, and um, this is the memory of um, of your girlfriend Alice, and. Uh, now there's something very interesting. This character is going to go right in front of his face. And you will actually, you have the feeling that she comes to you. Uh, it's, uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> She's kissing him. And she disappeared. Um, I think we went through the, the sandbox demo. Um, now you, got, you can go around and um, this is a shader we're building for the virtual reality uh, environment. Uh, as you can see, there's like um, a pulse of light coming out of the character that... Um, and in this world, you will have a complete uh, different gameplay uh, that uh, it's pretty intricate, so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna explain it. Um, but, I mean, possibilities are endless. Uh, there is, seriously, we can, we can do so much. Uh, this is just the beginning. Uh, as you can see, the setup uh, shows how how uh, things are very in an early stage. Um, when it will be mass marketed, the controller will be wireless, there, there will be no lag, and uh, there will be high res resolution, um, and things will be, uh, 
And the song you're hearing now is, a, is from the, a band, Italian band, who is the lead singer, being the, is the lead designer and the lead singer of this band. Uh, we both have, um, we are working on, uh, on this game as uh, technicians. I am an actor, I come from, uh, from the, the world of movies. Uh, he comes from music, so we really, we are focused on the artistic part of a game and the storytelling. For us, storytelling is, it, it, it's the opportunity of doing something that is almost like a movie, a virtual reality movie. You are in, some, in a story that you're living. Uh, this, is, this is what we're aiming for. Um, and that's it, I think it's, it's over. We can, we can finish. Oh, we are on Kickstarter right now. <laughs> this is pretty important. So if you think this is an idea worth it, uh, you can go and look for Untold Games and for look for Loading Human on Kickstarter and put a dollar. Uh, it will be amazing for us. Um, that's it. I didn't realize there was anyone here. Hello? Oh, wow. That's uh, how it is. Especially it was, it was so quiet out here, and then you take it up, and it's like, oh! <laughs> I thought everyone had gone. Wow. But yeah, that, that's great. And that's my first experience as well. And I didn't feel... You didn't? Just, no, not really. You were so lucky. You are so lucky. There was Hold a on, couple of me... times where the lift dropped. Uh, how can I move? And it was a bit like, whoa. Hold on. I'm going to do something so that I can... I want... Uh. Yeah, that's good. But there's a couple of times when the lift dropped and there's a bit like, whoa. Yeah, or oh, when you crouch. Those yes, are the moments yes. where you actually feel that there is a high. And, uh, yeah. and the first time you go down the stairs, that's a bit of a weird sensation. But after a while, it all kind of becomes natural. And you start putting your hands out to reach stuff. It's very natural. There is no interface. Yeah. And you actually only press one button. Uh, we, we, we were focusing on, uh, on making the, the game the sim as simple as possible. So we don't believe in interface, in virtual reality. What you want to see is the reality. And then you want to interact with the reality almost like you, you would in, uh, in this reality. <coughs> but it's a game. Uh, this is something very important about the game. We are not looking for uh, a perfect reality. It's something we, we, we will never be able to, to obtain. So you are mimicking, you are doing something that is like reality, but of course it's a game. Uh, and there is a gamepad, and you move with the gamepad. It's fun. You know, you can break things, take things, launch them, put them on the water. Uh, you'll be able to pick up bodies. <laughs> you have a lot of possibilities. So it's a puzzle game as well. That is fundamentally, it's a puzzle game. It is a puzzle game, yes. But uh, real-life problem-solving puzzle games. So the puzzle you have to solve would be the one that you would solve in real life. OK. Oh, brilliant. Right, should we open it out to the audience with some questions? Let's wander back. Wow, I'm walking. This feels a little <laughs> bit weird. Right, here we go. This gentleman here. Uh, yes. Will there be an inventory? Because if you want to have more objects but still maintain simplicity without an interface. So that's a nice question. We've, we've been thinking a lot about inventory. Uh, no. We thought that at maybe you might have pockets. It's something we're working on. We don't know yet. Uh, an inventory is completely crazy. I mean, if you, I don't know if you recall Indiana Jones, the, f the, the first one. When you get to Venice, there's a moment where he takes this, uh, this huge metal uh, bar and he just puts it in the jacket and disappears in the jacket. And it was, it's, it was fun. But in, in this kind of game, I think it wouldn't work. It wouldn't be real. You would need an interface. So we prefer maybe a pocket and you can put something in your pocket. Uh, or use your both hands and then put the object and then take it back after. So it's ultimately meant to be realistic. Yes, right? yes. So you don't lose. We're working on that. An AK-47 and a shotgun in a small pocket. <laughs> exactly. Right. Any more questions at the back? Otherwise, I'll keep asking them. So when are you guys like in terms of structure? It's a, it's a story. What what's the, the premise? So the premise is that your father. Uh, his name is uh, Dorian Barrick. He's 172. We're in the future, uh, uh, around um, 2,185. And your father has was one of the greatest uh, physicists of the 22nd century. And he invented the interstellar travel, he, the, the engine to make that. So he became filthy rich. And uh, with this money, he started to uh, fight his own uh, death. So basically, he invented a, a machine called Lazarus which can actually uh, slow, slow down the aging of his cells. 
Uh, but after about five decades, uh, the, 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 the process doesn't work anymore, so he needs more energy to, to slow down and maybe to reverse his aging. That's why it's called Dorian, um, Dorian Gray. And um, so that's where you come in. Uh, you're, you're his son, and you will have to uh, retrieve this energy source, which is in the Eagle Nebula. So you will have to take a, a spaceship, go there, and bring it back. Uh, you, the, the, you start in this scientific base in the North Pole where you meet this woman. Uh, she's the one that is taking care of your father in this scientific base. And of course, uh, something is going to happen between you and the girl. And uh, you, will be, you will be cornered in, uh, between two choices. Uh, the first one would be to stay with your girlfriend and uh, leave your father <laughs> to the death or to save your father but leave your girlfriend because the trip to the, um, to the quintessence, to the, this energy source, lasts uh, 10 years. So you would actually lose your girlfriend. Um, so yeah, this is, this is the premise. So this is like the beginning. The, the sp and then, of course, the story evolves in something completely different. You're delivering in episodes, I do believe, right? You're doing various yes, different episodes. Yes, yes, we're working on episodes. Uh, mostly because um, it's easier to scale the project in three episodes more than one. Uh, we can uh, reuse assets and uh, uh, spend less money on the, on the development. So you're, this was Unity, I think you said, right? This is Unity. And you you're using Unreal 4 now. Yes, um, he's, he's a technician. He can tell you about it. Next so release will be in Unreal 4. Uh, we left Unity because we had some problems with the physics, as you can feel uh, playing. Uh, the small objects can pass through things uh, and, uh, and something like that. And also cause uh, rendering uh, of the real is faster and uh, really, really better. You can have uh, re reflections. Uh, no, not that Unity, so I mean the, the, the last Unity, Unity 5, has amazing shaders. Yes, it really looks good. It, it looks come, amazing. Uh, um, it will come in a year, so Unreal. Now we are in Unreal, now. so we're staying there. Yeah. And it's obviously a much better looking engine. Didn't you guys put out a comparison video? Yes, we did. Unity versus Unreal 4. But it, it is uh, quite biased, biased, I don't know how to say that. Biased, yes. Because this is uh, Unity 4 and the new Unreal, oh, which I should see. be Unreal Unity 5. Uh, but still, uh, for us, it was a huge leap forward. Huge. So are you concerned about, you mentioned the motion sickness before I used it for the first time, just in case. Um, that happened a lot in the early Oculus Rift because there was a... Uh, there wasn't La latency. Yeah, between yeah. the movement and so. Uh, there doesn't seem to be that in this version. Do you think this that's is the, the first the version? This oh, is, is the really? oldest version, yes. So is that the one with the latency? Yes, yes. It's oh, a piece of history of yeah. virtual reality. Maybe I'm just slow to react. It's uh, one year <laughs> old. More than one year old. Yeah, it's one year, uh, one year old, yes. So have you guys got it working on the new Oculus now without yes. the latency? Yeah, oh, it's much better. And, and Unreal 4 as well. And of course, with new, um, the new one, uh, and also in, in uh, portable fields of, uh, of Sony, you will have a uh, higher resolution. And, and there's uh, positional tracking, which uh, yeah. is very important. Now, you if you lean feel. forward, it's not going to follow. So basically, you're not going to feel like you're leaning forward. But in the next version, you have positional tracking. So if you do movements that are those kind of movements, you will be able to do them in virtual reality, uh, which, which take off almost all the nausea. You guys must have been delighted when Sony announced their Morpheus. Oh, it's amazing. It, it opens you up to a new platform now. Are you excited about that prospect about reaching a more mainstream? Are you audience? kidding? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, I mean, I think virtual reality is a, is a complete new media. I mean, you tried it. You know what we're talking about. Yeah. It's something completely, completely new. You, you, you would never experience it if not that way. It, it reminds me a bit of... Uh, of the movies at the beginning of the century, 19th, when, where people were running away from the train that was coming because they thought it was real, because their brain wasn't ready to, to actually see a, a moving image coming to them. That, that, that's what you get here. You know, our brain is not ready for virtual reality. We're, we haven't grown up with virtual reality. So for us, as soon as you get inside this, this reality, it's, uh, it's, it's mind-blowing. There is a, a beautiful demo of a roller coaster. And uh, it's one of the best demo to try first. Um, it's a rift coaster, it's called. And um, it's, uh, every time people try it, they just start screaming like if they were on a roller coaster. And they're not. They're just on, the, on a chair. And uh, this is how powerful is virtual reality. You actually start to believe that what you're seeing is actually real. And it's, uh, it's mind-blowing for uh, storytelling. It's just, it's, uh, it's, 
potential are limitless. Did you happen to see the video of the guy who took an Oculus Rift on a roller coaster and did the roller coaster demo? No. No, so he, it's basically he was just doing the exact same ride at the exact same time with the Oculus Rift. It's great, check it out. But seriously, it's like everything was happening at once. He was looking and... Yeah, you're right, you're right. The, there is so much potential. I mean, we, we're, every tech demo that comes out has new ideas and uh, bring, brings up new possibilities for virtual reality. We're, we're at the beginning of the beginning. So it's so exciting. It's so exciting. Uh, uh, and for example, in, in my opinion, uh, the great potential of uh, virtual reality is that you can uh, feel uh, emotions that you can't feel in, uh, in reality. For example, uh, walking at z zero gravity or uh, walking uh, in the middle of, a, of, of fires. Uh, so you yes, you in the game you, you'll, be, you'll, you'll have in the second chapter a moment in, 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 uh, in uh, zero gravity environment in the middle of the space where you have to fix your, uh, your spaceship. So imagine that in virtual reality. What is it? You, know, you are inside nothing and you actually see the stars and you have to move and take the things in, in zero gravity I mean it's just we can't wait to, to do it and try it for ourselves <laughs> we're doing it for that because we are having fun doing it how do you guys get past that disconnect because if you're floating in space obviously you take it off and you're not floating in space I mean how do you transfer that into the actual game so people are experiencing that uh, like we were saying, there are many ways of uh, tricking the brain of the, of the player that things are heavier than normal or are lighter than normal. You can do that by slowing down the movement of, uh, of I mean, you do a real movement in reality, but in the virtual reality, your movement is going to be delayed and it's going to be slower. And this will actually uh, give you the order of slowing down. So to cope with virtual reality, you will start to feel that the object is heavier. Um, there is a very in intimate uh, relationship be between what you see and what you actually do in reality. Not only what you do in reality and what you see in the game. Uh, it's a double... Uh, so yes, there are ways of uh, making you feel that you are in, in virtual... Gra of course, it's fake. It's not real. It's a game. Uh, uh, you, you should have fun. That's, that's w the, the basic uh, premise. Wait, that wasn't real? No, oh, that wasn't oh, real, sorry. I'm sorry. No, it was real, but uh, in another reality. <laughs> so it's a new tech, obviously, so everyone's experimenting at the moment. Do you see any limitations to it, or do you think the sky is the limit? For now, I think the sky is the limit. Yeah. And, and now we are only in, uh, in the beginning, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are in, in, in the first uh, year of uh, virtual reality, so... So in five years' time, yeah. that's Oh, it. it's going to be... Who knows, who knows? Improving technologies, improving uh, hardware capabilities, so you, you can do really exciting things. And of course, Oculus is now owned by Facebook. Have you seen any changes happen? Because obviously you guys were working with it when the transition happened, right? No. Yes, we were in the middle of it. Uh, actually, it be, we had that day where Oculus said, uh, Facebook, uh, and we were like, we, we were happy because basically having Facebook behind gives uh, gives the startup a heavy ground where to uh, how to evolve, and then a couple of days after, uh, PlayStation 4 announced Project Morpheus. So we were, we were <laughs> it was we a were good week for you, right? Good yeah. few weeks. Yeah. yeah, brilliant guys. Does anybody else have any questions? We got one over there. I'm wandering back into the audience. Here we go. Yeah, I'm just wondering what happens when you pull focus, when you look at something that's far away versus close, when you've just been in there. So you could you just explain how that, do you see a double finger if that's close to you, for instance? Yeah, it's, it's perspective. I'll, I'll explain this one, obviously. Sorry, guys. But I mean, if your hand's there, you see your hand there as it is. If you put your hand there, your hand looks that far away. If you drop your hand, you'll see the doorway over there. So perspective-wise, it, it's 3D because uh, it's all surrounding your vision. That's the t how the tech works, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, you, when you put the screen, you don't see a screen. You see a reality. So you actually see the horizon. And things are, can be really far away. It pretty much depends on the resolution. You know? how, how far away you can see is, ab is, is all about how many pixels you can draw uh, on, the, on, the, on the screen. But yeah, it's completely open. You have the feeling of being in an open space, not in a closed one. Brilliant, he has a follow-up. Just to be clear, is everything in focus all the time? Because in reality, like, if I'm looking at something close by, the things far away are not in focus, and, um, and the reverse. That's what I'm really asking about. 
right now everything is in focus. Um, you, there is no uh, shift in the focus because this would require the tracking of the pupil. I mean, it's something that uh, it's not doable right now. And, and also, because uh, your eyes uh, will make that work, um, wearing the, the the helmet, your eyes works like in uh, in reality. So if you focus uh, an object, yes, uh, it does it. It does it uh, automatically yeah. because uh, basically you are mimicking uh, for each eye the reality. So it's the eye itself that adapts to the light and adapts to the uh, to the depth of the of the image. Also, because uh, depth of field, the, the dolphin video games, uh, is used to simulate a camera, not eyes. It, it's different how, wo how our eyes work uh, respect to a movie camera. Yeah, basically, a there is a lot, that a lot of, the, of the work is done by the eye itself and not by the, but what you're, but, but, but the screen. Brilliant. We've got another question back here. Thank you. Now, most video games are like, um, <coughs> they have the loading screen, they intersect different levels. Is this going to be more open world where you go from A to B and you can go anywhere in between them? Um, so basically, <coughs> it, it pretty much depends on the money you can raise for the game, of course. Um, this what is where, we this want is to do. Plug. This is where you plug the Kickstarter. <laughs> exactly, Kickstarter. <laughs> and, um, but basically, what we want to do is a small open world with a lot of interaction every centimeter as you can walk. So we're not aiming at uh, long, long distance walking or uh, we, we prefer a small reality where you can actually interact with everything is around you. I mean, if you just look around this place, this, just this room, you would be able to do a whole adventure in this room. Uh, there are so many objects you can interact with. Uh, all those objects you can see. So imagine if you do that in a scientific base. It's already enough um, from the... Um, the, the, the interaction point of view to create a full game. Um, the, it, it's more of uh, size goes smaller, but depth of the, of the world goes deeper. You can uh, actually uh, do a lot more things in a smaller space. Um, we c applying the, the standard video games uh, distances in virtual reality would be really boring. Uh, going through a corridor for Three seconds, four seconds. It's uh, it's too long, and if you if you can't do anything, you really feel like you're in an, in an empty space, in a dead space. Also, cause uh, in virtual reality, you have to move uh, your body with uh, real speed, so you can't uh, run too fast or uh, turn too fast. Otherwise, you can feel really sick. So yes. you have to manage distances like in reality. Not like in, uh, for example, Skyrim or That's why games virtual like that. reality games require a specific design from the beginning. Uh, you can't, I mean, you can adapt a game to virtual reality, but it's, it's a wrong process because uh, the games, in the, 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 the standard video games, they have different sizes, different dimensions, and different speeds that are good for the screen, but not for virtual reality. Guys, and the Kickstarter address, what's that? Oh, it's loading human. I mean, you go to Kickstarter and you, you're loading human and you'll find That's out. Uh, we already we made it. I mean, uh, we, we've been funded yesterday. We still have 15 days left. Uh, there are, uh, yeah, we have stretch goals, the stretch goals. And uh, so multi-language, voice acting, uh, motion capture, um, a lot of amazing things that we could do if we have uh, just a bit more money. So if you can help, help. So there you go, folks. Can I get a huge round of applause for the guys from Untold Games? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much, guys. Uh, yes, we've got a massive show tomorrow, so if you're around, come on, lots of prizes to be won. It's not Funhouse, but it's nearly there. Thank you very much, folks, for coming. Have a great evening.